New York City has always been a city of contrasts, home to towering skyscrapers, world-class culture, and vibrant neighborhoods. But beneath the surface, it's also been a battleground for street gangs that shaped the city's history. From the gritty streets of Brooklyn to the tough corners of the Bronx, gangs have fought for power, control, and survival. These groups weren't just involved in petty crime, they became entrenched in the fabric of the city, sparking rivalries that lasted decades. In today's video, we're diving into the stories of the top 10 most dangerous gangs in New York's history. These gangs built their empires through violence, intimidation, and an iron grip on their turf. Some faded away, while others still cast a shadow over the city's underworld. But no matter their fate, their legacy is undeniable. Number 10. 18th Street Gang The 18th Street Gang, also known as Barrio. 18 or 18th Street is a notorious transnational criminal group with a violent reputation, primarily composed of individuals of Central American and Mexican descent. Originally founded in Los Angeles in the early 1980s, the gang has grown into one of the most dangerous and widespread criminal organizations in the United States. With a membership ranging from 30,000 to 50,000 across the U.S., Mexico, and Central America. Known for its brutal tactics, the 18th Street Gang is heavily involved in various illegal activities, including extortion, racketeering, and distribution of illicit substances, alongside engaging in violent confrontations with rival gangs, particularly MS-13. The gang's violent nature was brought to public attention in New York, where its presence became a significant issue. Members of the 18th Street Gang often operate in various parts of Queens, Brooklyn, and other areas of the city. Their activities are not limited to street violence and turf wars, but extend to larger criminal enterprises, where the gang maintains its influence over a range of illicit activities. In particular, 18th Street has been involved in trafficking illegal substances and other crimes that threaten public safety. One of the gang's most chilling incidents occurred in October 2017. Yankee Michel Cruz Mateo, a member of the 18th Street Gang based in Queens, pleaded guilty to his involvement in the brutal death of Jonathan Figueroa, a 20-year-old from Salgardes. Cruz Mateo had orchestrated the attack after suspecting that Figueroa was an informant. Luring Figueroa from Queens to Kingston, the gang members brought him to a remote location where he was subjected to a violent act, captured on video to instill fear and deliver a warning to others about betraying the gang. The video showed the victim being wounded repeatedly, and his body was later disposed of in a shallow grave. This act of extreme violence was not an isolated case. These manslaughters were part of a broader pattern of violence aimed at asserting dominance and punishing perceived disloyalty. Number 9. Ghost Shadows Gang The Ghost Shadows, also known as GSS, are a Chinese-American street gang that emerged in New York City's Chinatown in the early 1970s. The gang was initially formed by immigrants from Taiwan and Hong Kong and quickly became one of the most feared criminal organizations in the area. Their ties to the On Leong Tong, a powerful Chinese fraternal organization, helped solidify their place in Chinatown's criminal underworld. The gang's distinctive black and white colors, which mirrored their name, symbolized their secretive and dangerous nature. From the outset, the ghost shadows were involved in a wide range of illicit activities. They were known for extorting local businesses, particularly restaurants, where they would demand protection money. In addition to extortion, the gang was heavily involved in illegal gambling and smuggling, with particular focus on distributing substances in underground markets. Their operations weren't confined to New York City, but extended to other Chinatowns across the United States. The gang's connections to larger organized crime groups, including the Sicilian Mafia, further boosted their influence. Throughout the 1980s, the Ghost Shadows engaged in intense turf wars with rival gangs, notably the Flying Dragons, who were aligned with the Hip Sing Tong, and the Division Street Boys, linked to the Tung On Association. These violent conflicts, often spilling into the streets, 
reinforce the Ghost Shadow's reputation for brutality and their readiness to use force to protect their territory and operations. One of the most notorious events that highlighted the gang's violent and aggressive nature took place in 1988. A group of Ghost Shadows clashed with Vietnamese teenagers near New York University in a violent brawl. Though no weapons were involved, the brutality of the confrontation shocked onlookers and solidified the gang's fearsome image. This event was a clear demonstration of the gang's willingness to engage in physical altercations without hesitation. By the mid-1990s, the gang's activities began to attract the attention of federal law enforcement. The U.S. government, using the RICO, racketeer-influenced and corrupt organizations, ACT, started targeting the Ghost Shadows and other powerful street gangs. One of the gang's leaders, Wing Yung Chan, who had strong connections to the On Leong Tong, was arrested and convicted for his role in the gang's racketeering activities. Though the Ghost Shadow's power was significantly diminished by the mid-1990s, remnants of the gang continued to operate in a more covert manner. Number 8. Trinitarios Gang The Trinitarios is a Dominican-American criminal organization that originated in New York City in 1993. It was founded by two Dominicans, Leonides Junito Sierra and Julio Caballo Marin, who were incarcerated on Rikers Island, New York's notorious jail. This gang was formed in response to the growing violence between different ethnic groups in the prison system, primarily as a means of protecting Dominicans and other Hispanic groups from African-American gangs. The Trinitarios took their name from three revolutionary figures from the Dominican War of Independence and adopted the national motto of the Dominican Republic, Dios, Patria, y Libertad, meaning God, Homeland, and Liberty. Their colors are lime green, red, blue, and white, reflecting the Dominican flag. Initially a prison-based group, the Trinitarios quickly expanded their reach, becoming a dominant force in the streets of New York City and eventually spreading to other areas, particularly in the northeastern United States. Known for their strict codes of loyalty and territorial control, they became a major player in the region's criminal underworld. Their activities have included substance trafficking, armed robberies, assaults, and violent territorial disputes. They operate as a structured network with different sets or factions in various cities, each one fiercely loyal to the central organization. In the years following its formation, the Trinitarios attracted attention for its violent methods and high-profile confrontations. One such event was the tragic massacre of Lissandro Jr. Guzman Feliz in 2018. Jr., a 15-year-old who aspired to join the police force, was mistakenly identified as a member of a rival gang. Five Trinitarios gang members attacked him in broad daylight, dragging him from a bodega and assaulting him with machetes and knives. The attack was captured on surveillance footage and went viral, shocking the city and sparking widespread outrage. While this incident marked a significant public turning point for the gang, it was far from the only violent event linked to their activities. In addition to their violent street tactics, the Trinitarios have been heavily involved in narcotics trafficking and firearm sales. Over the years, federal and state authorities have arrested numerous members targeting their operations through large-scale investigations such as Operation Patria and Operation Green Haze. Many have also faced charges for illegal possession and trafficking of firearms, with several firearms being seized during raids and arrests. One of the more notable operations occurred in 2019 with Operation Emerald Crush, a large-scale law enforcement effort that led to the arrest of over 30 individuals including 18 members of the Trinitarios. These individuals were charged with various offenses, including the sale of narcotics and firearms, with an estimated $120,000 worth of substances being seized, along with dozens of firearms. Authorities found that members of the gang were using stolen firearms to further their illicit activities. Number 7. Folk Nation Gang the Folk Nation Gang, originally founded in Chicago in 1978 under the leadership of Larry Hoover, 
has grown into a formidable street organization with chapters across the United States, including in New York City. The Alliance was initially created to unite various street groups under one banner, primarily as a counterforce against rival gangs, particularly the People Nation. Over the years, this alliance expanded and evolved, with the Gangster Disciples, GD, becoming one of its most recognized subsets in New York. In the city, the Folk Nation has been notorious for violent and aggressive behavior. Their operations are centered in Brooklyn, in neighborhoods like Canarsie, Brownsville, and Prospect Park South, where they are known for their brutal clashes with rival groups such as the Bloods and Crips. These turf wars have fueled much of the gang's violent legacy. Shootings, drive-by incidents, and public displays of aggression have become regular features of their presence in these areas. One of the most significant events involving the Folk Nation in New York occurred in 2022, when federal prosecutors unsealed an indictment against seven individuals tied to the gang. The group was charged in connection with a drive-by shooting in Canarsie, that took place on Father's Day. The attack left one individual injured and surveillance footage captured gang members celebrating the violent act. Authorities linked this incident to a broader ongoing feud with rival gangs, demonstrating the gang's willingness to engage in violent acts without regard for the safety of the community. The Folk Nation's criminal activities are not limited to street violence. Illicit substance trafficking particularly the distribution of illegal substances, plays a major role in the gang's operations. The members of the Folk Nation were involved in a series of shootings that left several people wounded. In one notable instance, gang members fired into a crowd in Prospect Park South, injuring two people. This was just one of many similar incidents that kept Brooklyn residents on edge. In another violent episode that year, Quime Waddell, a prominent member of the No Love City subset, opened fire from a scooter into a crowd of suspected rival gang members. Although no one was seriously injured, the open display of violence signaled the gang's disregard for law enforcement and public safety. Number 6. Latin Kings Gang The Latin Kings, formerly known as the Almighty Latin King and Queen Nation, is one of the largest and most notorious Hispanic street and prison gangs in the United States, with a powerful presence in New York. The gang was founded in 1954 in Chicago by Puerto Rican immigrants seeking to protect their community from rival groups. Over time, it grew into a national criminal network with two primary factions, the Chicago-based King Motherland Chicago and the Bloodline Faction, which was established in New York in 1986 by Luis King Blood Felipe. Felipe, who was incarcerated at the time, created the Bloodline Faction as an extension of the gang's influence and under his leadership, the Latin Kings in New York became a formidable force. Felipe led the gang from prison, orchestrating numerous illegal activities, including racketeering, extortion, and the distribution of illicit substances. He was notorious for his ruthless approach to maintaining control, both within the gang and against rivals. In the early 1990s, internal struggles within the gang resulted in violent conflicts that claimed the lives of several members. Felipe's leadership was challenged, and several bloody confrontations occurred as members fought for power. This period of violence became a hallmark of the Latin King's operations. One of the most infamous incidents tied to Felipe was the brutal execution of gang member William Lil Man Cartagena in 1994. Cartagena was lured into an abandoned apartment in the Bronx, where he was attacked, dismembered, and set on fire, a crime for which Felipe was later implicated. Felipe was eventually indicted under the RICO Act in 1994, facing charges for orchestrating violent acts, including murders and drug trafficking. In 1996, Felipe was sentenced to 250 years in prison for his role in the gang's criminal activities. His conviction marked a turning point for the gang, but despite his incarceration, the Latin Kings continued their operations, transitioning to new leadership. In the late 1990s, Antonio Fernandez, known as King Tone, assumed control of the Latin Kings in New York. Under Fernandez, 
The gang attempted to improve its public image by aligning with Puerto Rican nationalist causes, participating in political demonstrations, and distancing themselves from their violent past. However, this public relations strategy did little to reduce their criminal activities, and Fernandez himself was eventually sentenced to 13 years in prison for his role in a drug trafficking conspiracy. Number 5. Gangster Disciples Gang the Gangster Disciples, GD, is a dangerous street and prison gang that originated in Chicago in 1968. Initially formed as the Black Gangster Disciple Nation, BGDN, by David Barksdale and Larry Hoover, the gang split in 1989 over leadership disputes. This division led to two major factions, the Gangster Disciples Nation, GDN, led by Hoover, and the Black Disciples Nation, BDN led by Barksdale. The GDN faction, under Hoover's leadership, spread its influence across the country, including to major cities like New York, where the gang has become notorious for its violent tactics, territorial disputes, and involvement in illicit activities. In Brooklyn, New York, the gangster disciples made their mark through a combination of aggressive violence and organized crime. The gang became known for engaging in violent confrontations with rival groups, particularly with gangs like the Crips and Bloods. They also engaged in a range of criminal activities, including the distribution of illegal substances to fund their operations. Members of the Gangster Disciples were often involved in retaliation-driven violence, using firearms to assert their dominance or protect their territory. A key event in the gang's criminal history occurred in 2020 when a 20-count superseding indictment was unsealed in Brooklyn Federal Court. The indictment charged 11 individuals linked to the GDs with violent crimes in aid of racketeering. The charges were connected to a series of shootings and violent incidents that took place in 2020 and 2021. The No Love City, NLC subset of the Gangster Disciples, was particularly prominent in these criminal activities. Key members of this subset, such as Oluwagbenga Agoro, Lorenzo Bailey, and John Fremont, were identified as leaders in the gang's operations. One of the most violent incidents occurred on March 14, 2020, at the Gold Room restaurant in Brooklyn, when a dispute between a GD member and a rival gang member escalated into a shooting. Quincy Battis, a GD member, confronted the rival outside the restaurant where he and others shot the victim at close range. This shooting was just one example of the gang's willingness to use firearms to settle disputes or send messages to their enemies. Number 4. Nine Trey Gangsters Gang The Nine Trey Gangsters are one of the most dangerous and influential criminal organizations on the east coast of the United States. Emerging from the notorious Rikers Island Jail in the early 1990s, this faction of the United Blood Nation quickly spread across New York City, particularly to Harlem, and later to other cities on the East Coast. Initially a prison-based group, the Nine Trey Gangsters expanded their operations to the streets, establishing a reputation for violence, control of illicit trades, and extreme aggression. In their prime, the Nine Trey Gangsters controlled significant areas of Harlem, particularly around Lenox Avenue. They were notorious for exploiting vulnerable groups, including minors and homeless people, coercing them into participating in criminal activities. The Nine Trey Gangsters' influence wasn't confined to New York City. The gang's downfall began in 2006 with a large federal operation, Operation Nine Connect, which resulted in the arrest of around 50 members. Despite the disruption, the gang's operations continued, albeit more covertly. However, by 2011, law enforcement had significantly weakened the group, though some members remained involved in the illicit activities, perpetuating violence and instability. A major turning point in the gang's history came in 2018, when rapper 6 9 who had publicly aligned himself with the Nine Trey Gangsters, was arrested. Hernandez had deep ties to the gang, using their image for promotional purposes, while also allegedly participating in several criminal activities. His arrest was part of a larger investigation that uncovered the depth of the gang's operations. 
Hernandez, facing serious prison time, decided to cooperate with authorities. His testimony played a key role in convicting several high-ranking members, including Kifano, Shati Jordan, the gang's leader, and other influential figures. The trial, which garnered national attention, exposed the gang's violent tactics and their control over the narcotic trade, as well as their role in organizing various criminal activities. Hernandez's decision to testify against his former associates was controversial, but it led to the conviction of several gang leaders. In exchange for his cooperation, Hernandez received a reduced sentence, and he was released earlier than expected due to health concerns related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Number 3. The Crips Gang The Crips, originally founded in South Central Los Angeles in 1969 by Raymond Lee Washington and Stanley Tookie Williams, are one of the most notorious and violent street gangs in America. The gang's creation was rooted in the racial and social tensions of the era, fueled by poverty, segregation, and the decline of black nationalist movements like the Black Panther Party. By the late 1980s, the Crips had begun expanding outside of California, and their influence reached New York City by the early 1990s, particularly in Brooklyn, the Bronx, and parts of Queens. This expansion was largely driven by members with ties to the West Coast, who carried the gang's violent culture and criminal activities into the city's streets. Once established in New York, the Crips quickly became known for their involvement in a wide range of illicit activities. At the heart of their operations was the distribution of substances, a profitable venture that allowed the gang to expand its influence across various boroughs. Crips members also engaged in other forms of criminal enterprise, including fraud schemes, identity theft, and firearms trafficking. While their criminal empire grew, so did the gang's violent reputation, particularly in their ongoing rivalry with the Bloods, another street gang. The gang's presence in New York gave rise to several prominent Crip sets, including the Hyena Crips, the Insane Crip Gang, ICG, and the Rolling Thirties. Each of these factions operated independently, but maintained ties to the larger Crips organization. Number 2. United Blood Nation Gang The United Blood Nation, UBN, also known as the East Coast Bloods, is a notorious street and prison gang that was founded in July 1993 by Omar O.G. Mac Porti and Leonard O.G. Deadeye McKenzie. The gang was initially formed within the New York prison system to unite various smaller street gangs for protection against rival groups. UBN's original alliance included several smaller factions, such as the Nine Trey Gangsters, G-Shine, Sex Money Murder, and Bloodstone Villains, and these groups would later form the backbone of the UBN's expansion. From its prison roots, the gang's influence quickly spread to the streets of New York City and beyond, growing in power as it established a reputation for violence, intimidation, and criminal enterprise. The UBN's operations became heavily tied to the illegal substance trade, which served as the gang's primary revenue source. One of the most infamous events in the gang's history occurred in 2001, when Omar O.G. Mac Porte was arrested and charged. His arrest was a significant blow to the UBN leadership. Porte was sentenced to 50 years in federal prison, where he remains to this day. Despite his imprisonment, the gang did not dissolve. Instead, it continued to thrive, although internal conflicts and factionalism weakened its cohesion in the following years. After Porte's arrest, Pedro Gutierrez, known as the chairman, rose to a leadership position. Gutierrez would later be arrested as well, marking another significant disruption in the gang's hierarchy. The UBN's violent tendencies were most evident in its rivalry with the Crips, a West Coast gang. This animosity, which had been a catalyst for the formation of the UBN in the early 1990s, continued to manifest in violent street clashes between the two groups. The rivalry often led to turf wars, shootings, and other violent incidents. A major operation targeting the UBN came in 2006, when law enforcement arrested over 60 individuals in New Jersey as part of Operation Nine Connect. 
This 11-month investigation revealed the gang's extensive criminal operations, including conspiracy and money laundering activities. While these operations disrupted the UBN's activities in New Jersey, they were not enough to dismantle the entire network. The United Blood Nation's brutal reputation continued through the years, with numerous members arrested and convicted for crimes related to their gang activities. Even with the loss of key figures like Porte and Gutierrez, the UBN has managed to maintain its influence in certain parts of New York, though it no longer holds the same power it once did. Number 1. MS-13 Gang The MS-13 Gang, also known as Mara Salvatrucha, originated in Los Angeles in the 1980s when a group of Salvadoran immigrants, fleeing the violence of the Central American Civil Wars, formed the gang as a way to protect themselves from other ethnic gangs in the area. Over time, the group grew from a small defensive force into one of the most violent and widespread criminal organizations in the world. The gang's influence spread rapidly throughout the United States, particularly in immigrant communities, and eventually extended into countries like El Salvador and Mexico. In New York, MS-13 has become infamous for its brutal tactics, including its use of machetes, clubs, and other weapons to assert dominance and control over neighborhoods, especially on Long Island. MS-13 uses violence and intimidation to control territory, and it often targets immigrant communities, forcing them to pay for protection or face violent retribution. The gang's operations extend beyond the streets, with deep connections to international criminal networks, including cartels in Central America and Mexico. They are heavily involved in trafficking various substances, including substances, and smuggling weapons and people across borders. In 2017, federal authorities took a significant step in dismantling MS-13's operations in New York, with a major indictment targeting 13 gang members, including Alexei Sayans. Sayans, also known as Blatzy or Big Homie, admitted to his role in multiple violent incidents, including the demise of the Brentwood Girls. In 2023, Sands pled guilty to charges of racketeering and conspiracy, with prosecutors outlining his involvement in at least eight violent incidents. He faces a sentence of 40 to 70 years in prison for his part in the gang's activities. The violence continued throughout the years, with several high-profile incidents underscoring the gang's terrifying presence.